Princess Ron Conkham has had enough of everybody's shit chilling in the lake. She told you, I, you've been warned, you got in the lake, now I'm, now I'm gonna kill you. That's a mood, that's a mood for 2020. It is literally just a couple of days before Christmas and oh, I'm so happy, I don't know about you guys, that we made it through 2020 somehow. Like, this year is gonna go down in history, isn't it? I was gone for a couple of reasons. Also, I have a cough drop in. I'm sorry, I'm rude, but I've had really bad allergies lately in Vegas. So long story short is, as you guys know, my mom had two kind of major sur- oh, she's had surgeries since last year. In the beginning of spring, which was like April, May, she ended up having uh, two back-to-back -back foot surgeries that she needed. And she's diabetic and it took her forever to heal. So, oh my gosh, she d she was officially like released, like to be like done with healing a, a week ago and it's in December. So it literally took like nine months of my life. So yeah, I'm really, really grateful that that's done. And I actually had, two leg procedures, one in September, end of September, and then the other in November. And honestly, they weren't major procedures. I'll talk about them later, but they were still invasive. And so I really feel like it just kind of threw me off balance for a minute. Like energetically, I just needed a time out. I'm back, I'm here, and today we're gonna spill some mofo tea. You know what I'm saying? to be spilt if. I have told you guys forever, literally for years, that one of my all-time favorite brands is ColourPop. I don't really think that's gonna change anytime soon. They just come out with really good, consistent quality stuff and, and it doesn't break the bank. Sometimes, after all, you're just paying for the packaging, not the actual like quality of the product. So I had found out this little guy was dropped. This is the Sandstone palette from ColourPop. There was some major tea. If you don't know, you don't follow, you know, any of the big like trend mood. She's essentially this is the inside of the palette, sort of Native American um, Navajo, if you will, artwork. ColourPop did not give the artwork like Native American credit basically is essentially what happened. So everybody was, <sighs> Generation Z is known for cancel culture. I don't really agree with cancel culture because I know myself that I've changed several times over, I was, I'm not even the same person I was yesterday, you know what I'm saying? But they're savage and uh, they wanted ColourPop canceled because of this palette. Now the right thing to do for ColourPop would have been, I will donate 2% of the proceeds or 5% of the proceeds to Native American education, like something, you know what I mean? Like something, but instead they were just like, we're just gonna change the packaging, sorry, we didn't mean to offend anybody. It's weird because if you look at these names, so the names they used, the top row, Big Bend, Pueblo, Open Road Vortex, um, Quest Crew, Bell Rock, second one is Westward, Red Earth, Canyon Loop, uh, Spring Valley, Oasis, Desert Sky, last one's Blaze, Recharge, Wild Creek, Big Butte, Grounded, and Templation? Tem Templation? Templation? Red Earth, I don't care, just like the name Red. You don't want it because Indians have been used in slur terms as being like Red Man Red. So you just don't do that, first of all. So second of all, um, they should have just fixed this the easy route and they didn't. So that's a shame, uh, but there's a lot of, like ColourPop, a couple employees tried to come forward saying they named it after like Arizona or like some of the street names of Arizona and like, you know, they were inspired by the towns of it that are in Arizona. Honestly, there's a ton of these names. One of the subdivisions is called Spring Valley here in Vegas. So literally like you can take, Colorado has a major city in the South called Pueblo. Like, so these names exist from everywhere, but I guess, the thing people don't understand is even though there's a lot of things and themes and, and names that are in this palette, it's still all stemmed from Native American culture. And, <clears throat> you know, myself, why am I so passionate about it is I've traveled to different tribes being represented by several tribes and gotten scholarships from tribes, as you guys know, to try to encourage um, indigenous women 
to continue their education because the education rates are so low on reservations across the United States. I'm fairly knowledgeable in this because of my heritage. I am about 50% Cherokee. I'm extremely proud of my heritage, as you guys know. Um, done a lot of work for um, indigenous people. That's one of my, my main themes. But I, I thought I would kind of educate ColourPop and or anyone else who wants to listen why uh, Native Americans, aka indigenous people, are offended by things continuing to be removed from our culture or not credited to our culture. Okay, so this book is a book that I purchased a long time ago at Barnes & Noble. It was literally on sale for like $5. What is it? It's the Easy Guide Read to the Constitution, Amendment Rights, the Gettysburg Address is in here. And I love how the author did it because essentially they take they take the two pages and they have old like original context, which sometimes this context is hard to understand and like comprehend. And they've transferred it into like translation into modern text. So I love it. I love it. So let's just, first of all, let's go over the Declaration of Independence really quickly, okay? I'm just gonna read a couple of things. So inside of the Declaration of Independence, the modern text for it, okay? So I'm gonna put it in like modern terms for you guys. He has encouraged revolutions among us and sought to pit Native American savages against frontier settlers, even though Native Americans are known to kill everyone, including women, children, and the el elderly. Okay, this, when, when was this written again? Let's just double check. In Congress, the Declaration of Independence is July 4th, 1776. Even though Native Americans are known to kill everyone, including women, children, and elderly Native American savages. I guess I'm a savage. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Oh, oh girl, I can be a savage. You know what I'm saying? Like. I think I can't just hit up one of my exes. You know what I'm saying? Okay, fast forward, fast forward. States can't fight wars without the approval. Wars without the approval. Wars without the approval. Wars without the approval. Okay, this is Articles of the Conf... Articles of the Conf... Articles of the Conf... Articles of the Confederation. Articles of the Confederation. States can't fight wars without the approval of Congress, except to repel invasions attack hostile Native Americans who are preparing for war or in extreme emergencies. Our own government says that they can declare war with us because we're savage Native Americans. That is in the Articles of the Confederation. In case you're wondering why indigenous people feel like we got the end of the stick, you know what I'm saying? Because we are still in these documents. Hmm. Pretty gross, isn't it? I'm gonna try to get off my soapbox for a minute. That could be hard. You know what I mean? Like, once I'm on my soapbox, it's hard to get off. Okay, for primer today, my skin's been a little bit dry, but I've just been trying to like baby it because we're in, because I'm in Vegas. Mm, what should I try? I did get something new. I have this Wet n Wild Primer Serum Prime Focus. It's for hydrating, so maybe I'll try that today. I actually do like Wet n Wild's um, like oils and primers. Their crystal ones are really good too. That serum's nice. It's not super sticky, so it pretty much works with my. Um, it's supposed to be hydrating, but it does work for me today. I can feel it. I did get a new shade of Juvia's Place Foundation because I kind of fell in love with it last month. This is the shade Vienna. It's really full coverage, but it's a little bit dark because now we're getting back into like no daylight here in Vegas. So I'm going to mix it with some of the Americo color, which is definitely way lighter. It's amazing to me though, like the misconceptions like with native lore and culture even. Like you take Pocahontas for example. John Smith was the one that actually was held captive by Pocahontas' father. Which by the way, Pocahontas wasn't even her real name. And John Smith is not who actually ended up marrying her. There was a John that married her but not John Smith. Her real name was Matoaka, 
and they believed that she was about 10 or 11 at the time she met John Smith. And essentially what happened was the chief, who was chief over about 30 tribes, who was Pocahontas' father, Pocahontas was just like a nickname that they gave her that just basically meant like a child with lots of energy. Pocahontas' father um, had held John Smith captive and when John Smith was released and returned to England, he wrote scripture about Pocahontas being this beautiful girl and like kind of sounded like a love story and that like she put her hand on him during a ritual and that's like essentially what saved his life. They don't think she was really necessarily saving him. They think she was just part of the ritual because Native Americans have extreme spirituality when we do things. John Smith went home back to England. Also, I'm gonna use the shade 21. I got a little bit, no, no, I got the new, the 23 is the new one. It's a little bit darker than the first one. So John Smith went home, cause obviously there was a lot of settlers like coming here like colonial times. When we were having all of the fights breaking out over land with um, indigenous tribes, and John Smith went back to England and he started telling people about the story of Pocahontas. And oftentimes when some of these men would dock their ships in the harbor from, you know, across the pond, they would sometimes run into or hear of Pocahontas. And she was often traveling um, in different locations, like if they needed food. There was a big drought going on at the time. Anyway, some people had heard of her. Some people were trying to meet her. And there was another guy who was also named John at the time. I'm not sure if it's pronounced John Rolf or John Rolfi, but that was his name. I'm gonna use kimchi setting powder and I'm just gonna do it all over my face. Anyway, this John Rolfi guy ends up running into Pocahontas, basically offered to trade her um, that like they would take Pocahontas in exchange for giving another slave up. Essentially he ends up luring Pocahontas onto his ship or boat, however you want to word it. And at the age of 14, he he kidnaps and sails away with Pocahontas. They think she was the age of, the age of 14. That's a child, like that's not even an adult. And from there, this guy marries her in England, basically she teaches her Christianity, forces her to learn Christianity. Obviously she had no choice. She was like literally an ocean away from everything that she had known. And then of course he ends up getting her pregnant. And then he ends up parading her through the streets of London and the UK to quote, show everyone that a savage can be tamed. It was a really sick, sick thing that was going on at the time. So yeah, if you talk about Pocahontas with, you know, native lore, culture, or anyone who's like indigenous, they pretty much hate Disney or at least hate that Disney reanimation because it was a complete false falsification. In my opinion, I think that even Disney, like, you know, Christianity is like supposedly what this country was built on. And I think that there's some sort of a sick love story with Christians or with like white people who want to think of a quote, savage falling in love with a white man to like bring peace to like the land and the country. And unfortunately that's just Hollywood, the not real life. She was a child, she was abducted, she was raped, she was married off at a young age and forced into a different culture. She was probably in culture shock, probably like experiencing what's that syndrome that you like identify with your abductor? Cause she had no choice, where is she gonna go? She can't even run. She has, She's in a completely new place that she doesn't even know or understand. So I just feel like this was a really good start to sort of educate people on native, like actual native culture. And that's gonna go on to my next topic, which is one of my personal, probably top 10 locations, haunted locations in the United States. This is the Kimchi Highlight Palette. It's been pretty much my favorite. In fact, I'm slowly hitting the pan on two of them, as you can see. First thing I'm gonna do is dip into my P. Louise because it's my favorite. This is shade 0.5. I'm just gonna put a couple drops on my Beauty Blender and then apply it to the eyelid. 
And before I do anything else, I'm going to take the Sandstone palette and I'm going to set it with the lightest shade in here, which is probably Big Bend. There's a little bit of shimmer in there. Now, the, the fallout on this girl, fallout on this girl, okay, is just, can you see that in the pan? Like, I don't know. Color pops usually on top of it, but damn. So yeah, I'm just going to uh, try to make sure that my crease doesn't get oily by just putting this on there. I'm gonna pop on a brow right now. Okay, there has been a new little um, trend going on, and it's where you kind of like splice your brow, and I don't know, I'm really digging it, guys. It's kind of like the alternative thing to do, and I myself am strange and unusual. So what I did was I literally just took, I literally filled my brows in, and then I took the Kimchi Correcting Concealer because it has this cute little like brush that gives you like the perfect brush on there. I used that for like to white it out. Now I'm going to take some powder on a little teeny brush and just set that spot with the concealer. Alright, so I'm about to talk about Princess Ron Konkuma and she has actually only done her serial killer status uh, since she's been dead and she's killed over 30 people men by drowning them. Mood princess, big mood. A lot of people around Lake Ronkonkoma um, think it's just like silly superstition. Like they don't really believe it's like a dead Native American princess causing all of these deaths. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do for color scheme today. Um, I'm gonna do some neutrals. I think I'm gonna give it some pop on the outer corner with some browns, but I'm really thinking I also wanna incorporate this sugar pill color in kimchi. Um, Native American speaks to me with like turquoise and brown, so I'm gonna go with that. So I'm gonna dip with Vortex first and like Quest Crew. Let me just see how this goes on because I can't really... Okay, so I'm gonna kind of like go in with a crease shade first. I mean, should I do like a cut crease? Like I don't really like to do those. I feel like maybe I should try a cut crease today just because I think that the turquoise would pop a little bit more. I'm gonna go back to my first brush and I'm just gonna get a little bit more big bend. Oh God, it's just falling everywhere. I'm gonna blend it a little bit on the top. I just don't want to have like super harsh lines in there. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and go in with the cut crease. Okay, more P. Louise and I'm going to put a little bit on the back of my hand so that I can use it. I hate cut creases on hooded eyes though, but we're gonna do it anyway. So in case you didn't know, Lake Ronkonkoma is um, Long Island, New York, if you know where that is. It is Long Island's biggest and largest, biggest, largest, and deepest lake. It's actually um, been mythed for years, like when tribes actually lived there. If somebody went missing in the lake, they thought it was due to the lake being bottomless. And it turns out it's not bottomless. They actually were able to measure it. And its deepest point is about 50 feet. But even before Princess Ron Konkuma died, um, people would die in that lake all the time and under like mysterious circumstances. So maybe it's a portal, like who knows? A lot of times when bodies would go missing in that lake too, they wouldn't be able to find or obtain the bodies later. And that goes for old times and for current times. So that's kind of mysterious, right? Secret with hooded eyes when you're doing um, a cut crease is you have to over direct it just a little bit more and like pull it up a little bit higher. Otherwise it like makes your eyes look really sort of squinty. So the next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack on sugar pill in kimchi on the lid. So Princess Ron Konkuma died sometime in the mid 1600s. They're not sure exactly when because records weren't really kept at that time. So there's several versions of Princess Ron Konkuma. And one of the versions is that obviously if they're living in Long Island, New York gets very cold in the winter. 
and they were able to walk across the ice to meet with other people and trade with them because it is quite a large lake. And one winter she walked across the ice and she did fall in love with have it no other else a, a, a white Christian guy. I mean, no offense, but what's so great about these white Christian guys, man? So his name was Hugh Birdsale. So this version of the story is she's basically walking to the other side of the lake every day and she's writing him love notes and he's writing her love notes back and they're falling in love, but you know, it's like the dead cold of winter. But then her father, who was the um, chief of the tribe, found out that she was sneaking across the ice to go um, meet with this guy. And he basically forbid her from seeing him or like being with him because he was white and Native American tribes, indigenous people didn't trust the white people because they were killing, they were killing the indigenous. So he did not want his daughter getting tied up with a white man in fear they might kidnap her or kill her and, and nobody really knows. Now during that time too, she would start sneaking letters to him by um, floating letters across the lake with like bark and stuff like, oh, it's this, it's this romantic shit again. Here we go. So it's, it's claimed with this version of the story that literally for seven years or several years, she was attempting to um, be with Hugh and her father said no. So essentially she rowed herself by boat, like a little probably canoe or boat into the lake and stabbed herself to death because she couldn't be with the one that she truly loved. Then it's said that after that, she cursed any men who ever went in the water. Other versions are she drowned herself, she didn't stab herself. It's claimed that her body somehow washed up in Connecticut and they couldn't figure out why because like her body basically disappeared. But they ended up finding out later, like scientifically speaking, that there's actual canals that go um, under Lake Ronkonkoma into other states. So that would make sense as to how her body washed up in a completely different state. Now, the interesting thing about this, because with myths, you never know like what's true or what's fake. There was a Hugh Birdsell who existed and he actually ended up going back to um, London or the UK and he ended up getting married. Okay, desert sky is this green sort of iridescent shimmer. It's cute. It's not great, but it's cute. I think I'm gonna add that shade too as like a highlight on my brow and just drag this one up. That's what I usually do is drag the inner corner around. I have a couple of different things to try. This is Wet n Wild and it's in shade Magic Trick. It was a Halloween one. But it's super sparkly. I was just going to use it to line my, um, I think I'm going to need more shimmer than that. So I have an e.l.f. as a backup. This is the e.l.f. little shimmers that they have. This is in color bling bling. I'm just going to put some on my hand like that. And then I'm going to use this to dip into it. I think we definitely need just like dark liner. Dark. Lips, what do we do for lips? I have a ColourPop pencil. Oh my God, this pencil's BFF. I have literally, it's time for a new one really bad. I can't decide what to do. I feel like coppery is probably the way to go. This is the Saved by the Bell lippy from Sola. I'm gonna take a brush and like blend it out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Now moving back to Princess Ronkonkoma, it's claimed that she claims a boy's life a year to avenge the fact that she couldn't be with her death and she is now indefinitely separated from um, her loved one. Obviously, if Hugh did exist, he's definitely passed by now. But it's interesting that they found recordings of him um, in England and then he actually got married there. So it'd be interesting to um, try to find his bloodline and like go, you know, like ancestry DNA, like, you know, everything's public anymore. 
and find out if like your great 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 grandfather ever spoke of you know princess ron kakama i just think that'd be interesting or like in maybe his old writings or something maybe they don't know anything basically they say princess ron kakama has now cursed the lake and indefinitely she um has you know taken many many victims they actually don't even know the total of victims are people who have drowned in the lake now what's my opinion on on this like native american perspective because i'm extremely spiritual and obviously my family was off the res and very spiritual i don't know if it was necessarily princess ron Konkuma. i think that's a really cool myth and like legend to carry on but if the natives were like living on that land and their land was taken at some point um, it was probably cursed by the natives, like the whole tribe, rather than just Princess Ron Kankama. Um, remember, like, native blood, ancestral blood from, um, native, like, family, like, my family, like, it goes, it runs deep, and it doesn't just disappear, like, when you, when they die and they go to the other side, like, people are a fool to mess with me because I'm Native American, because my my ancestors my grandmother especially are like strong like they are very powerful people and uh you're always protected by them in life and in death what do you guys think about princess ron Kankama? if you have gone there to long island or whatever you think i'd love to hear in the comments below what you think about the lore myth and legend of princess ron Kankama. the last thing i have to talk about is what was my opinion on the sandstone palette. Do I think you shouldn't buy it because I'm Native American? No. Buy whatever you want. Like, I don't care. You know, like, I'm the anti-beauty blogger. Like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you what to buy and what not to buy. Um, I think there's a lot of fallout. That concerns me more than the, the Native American part, honestly. Um, I've never had a palette have so much fallout, to be honest, um, color pop wise Now, what do I think about the native side of this? I mean, I think the color story is pretty. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's pretty. Don't ever use the term red when it comes to Native American, no matter what. I know this is called Red Earth. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do Study. And, and here's, another, here's another opinion on it. First of all, the right thing to do is just donate a percentage proceed to Native American or whatever. I don't know. Um, that's the right thing to do. You know, like, do the right thing. Like, just do the right thing. Do the right thing, like, morally. Always do the right thing morally. You know? Like, don't just, like, slough it off and be like, okay, I'm sorry, we're going to change the packaging. Do the right thing. Fix it. Sloughing it off and trying to, like, blow it under the rug. That's what we've gone through for years as natives, you know? Like, force onto the Trail of Tears and we die and, like, starve and then we're forced on, you know. Just do the right thing. Just do the right thing. It's really not that hard. Don't... If I were to build a native palette, there was, this happened before. I don't know if you guys remember this. There was like a girl three or four years ago. She went viral on social media. It was like overnight, Instagram and Twitter. I can't remember who she was or what her name was, but she was Native American and she decided to make a native palette. And I remember seeing it and I was in like shock. And, and the reason I was in shock was she put weird names in the palette like Trail of Tears and I was like, it's really like demeaning to like our ancestors that died. Why would you say that? You know, like there's other ways to like serve them and like pay lineage to your heritage without like talking about like the gory stuff and like the disrespectful stuff. So she ended up like disappearing and nobody ever heard from her again, which was sad because she had said she pre-ordered all the palettes and I can't imagine how much that would cost. So this has been done before where people screw up. Um, people are going to screw up though. You know, like that's the other thing. Like I don't know. I don't really believe in cancel culture because, I mean, I guess if you're a pedophile, you should definitely be canceled, you know? Like, there's certain things that are unforgivable, but for making this palette, should ColourPop be canceled? Come on. Get out of here. I don't have time for this. If you had time to work on yourself, boo, and fix yourself, but I do agree with ColourPop not just doing the right thing. They should have just done the right thing from the beginning. I am doing a voiceover really quickly for you guys because uh, something kind of unexpected happened. As I was filming this, I knew that I probably got some paranormal activity, but I wasn't sure how much I had gotten until I went back and actually heard like the drum noises and whatnot, what we were hearing. But I actually went on to Instagram to do a couple of stories and I had some major paranormal activity happen. So I want to play that video for you. Okay, so the other Ghost Girl Diaries channel. The new Sorry. 
That's what happens when I film. Okay, so the other Ghost Girl Diaries channel. The new What happens when I film creep? Okay, so the other Ghost Girl Diaries channel. The new That's what happens when I film creep. I uploaded the video to TikTok and I had a lot of people telling me they saw a long dark-haired woman in the mirror. I'm gonna assume it was probably either Pocahontas or it was Princess Ronkonkoma. Uh, once again, talking about my native roots and how deep they stem, you know, it's very powerful to have native blood. Um, I've had ex-boyfriends when I've gotten in fights, they'll wake up the next day and tell me that my grandmother came to them and she scared like the living crap out of them. So that native blood runs deep. I feel like my guides really let me connect um, with these two energies during this particular stream. Kat did go through the video and she did take screenshots of it. So I wanted to go ahead and post those. I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below. Do you think it was Pocahontas? Do you think it was Princess Ronkonkoma? What do you guys think? Also, if you're interested in any really good ghost stories or Native American lore, I'm reading these because I'm hoping to bring these some of some of them to life um, for future creeps and cosmetics. It is Native American ghost stories um, that are like straight off the res, which I love. So thank you guys so much for um, tuning in to my episode. Sorry I've been gone for a minute. Everything is back to normal. Make sure you um, give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me comments below and lots of love. Make sure you guys are following me on social media. I was just filming a TikTok as well. So if you don't follow me on TikTok, I'm gonna be on there doing makeup paranormal stuff. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. Princess Ron Conkham has had enough of everybody's shit chilling in the lake she told you i you've been warned you got in the lake now now i'm gonna kill you that's a mood that's a mood for 2020